Hey guys, uh, today we're going to present a short video about the replacement of our refrigerator. Um, we used to have an Adler Barber and it drew about 17 amps and it was just a power suck. And so we decided to replace it with an isotherm and it's working great for us now and we have some footage of when Jeff was doing the replacement and so we're going to splice together a little video and show you how it all worked out. Um, if you want to come over here, just real quick. We have a refrigerator that both is accessible from the top and you can see the isotherm smart energy control unit is over here on the right hand side. But we also have the added benefit of accessing our refrigerator from the front, like a typical fridge in a house. And we have two shelves and we always keep a uh, thermostat inside uh, so that we're sure that everything is staying cold. Our cold plate is over here on the left hand side and we tend to keep the bottom of the fridge full of beer because it keeps things really cold. So we're going to show you a little bit about the installation process. Uh, we bought the unit from Defender. You can still get the unit uh, at Defender. It's actually on sale right now. We don't get any perks from telling you this, but uh, just thought we'd let you know that we're really happy with the way the unit is working. It's running about between, what, 3 and 5 amps? When it's running. When yep. it's running. And it runs probably about 10 to 15 minutes a, an hour. Okay, and we are currently working with two solar panels that are 100 watts each, so we have 200 watts of solar going, and the refrigerator is, is running just fine, um, and we're going to be adding another 200 watts of solar, so we just want to make sure that we're always sort of ahead of the game. On a day like today, we're not getting any solar in because it's really rainy, but the refrigerator is still working and everything is keeping cold. We also have really well insulated refrigerator, and that is the key. Um, we have about this much insulation you can see on the top um, and on all the sides. And so if your refrigerator is not keeping cool, highly recommend adding a little bit of extra insulation. So with that, we'll get right to the footage. So this is where we're going to install it. This was where our previous compressor was. And you can see its footprint was quite huge. Um, we're going to install it, our, our new compressor, which is the footprint's this big. Uh, this is the mount for it. We're going to install it right here um, temporarily. I think next year we're going to, or, or I should say this winter, we're going to clean up this whole um, shelf and uh, maybe pour some thin layer of epoxy on the top of it. And I will um, secure this better with some uh, fiberglass and then do it another one. And then we can hang this mounting bag, bag um, from here and get it up off the ground and open up this whole shelf space for uh, other uses. But for the moment, we are just going to install it right here. So I've now secured the mounting plate and the next step is just to drop these on here and then pull these out. And it's a sort of quick connect um, sort of thing with the, the compressor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. is now in there and it can jostle around a little bit um, so next step uh, I think is to hook up a little bit of the electrical uh, and the switch so this right here is our smart control unit um, the electronics for it and then here's the electronics for the system itself uh, the condenser and everything else and so this thing just slides right on to that the blue one slides right onto that one. And then we're gonna hook up our power, uh, the fan power here, and then also the control um, and temperature sensors here. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, we hook this up and we, then we put a zip tie on it to hold it on. Okay, so we got all the wires set up here. Um, bottom is the fan ones that you will have pulled out from the, the sockets here before you put this blue one on. Um, and then these two larger ones are our power, and then right here is some of the control from the um, thermostat. And you know this one runs into down and into the uh, the fridge unit itself. We'll come back here talk about the dipstick um, or um, the different dip set settings uh, down here, and um, we'll also clean this all up and secure our wires a little bit more. 
but we are ready to go. So this is our thermostat and our control system. Um, we are going to mount it somewhere here in the box. You can see these wires coming off. This white one is the one that goes to the um, control unit, the electronic control unit on the compressor. Um, these yellow and green wires are not important to us because they are for a lamp that some of the systems have that we do not. I think you can buy it and add it on if you really want to. Um, and then this black wire is going to be our uh, temperature sensor. Um, and we're going to attach that to the plate itself. Um, so I'm going to get to that and I'll show you what we've got when we're done. Okay, this is our temperature sensor um, for the smart control. And um, I don't know why, but they want you to pass it outside the box and then bring it back in. And we're going to attach it right in here, which is our temperature sensor um, grill. And so we're going to have to drill another hole through the back of the um, box and attach it in here. Um, but we're, and we're also going to, inside of that thing, want to have at least... Uh, 24 inches, or, or 20 to 27 inches, I guess is what they say, of this cord wrapped in there so that you don't have, um, you know, the warm temperature from outside affecting the temperature reading. So I've taped off 24 inches. I'm going to run it out through our hole that we've, um, out through our hole there that we've ran everything else out through. Um, and then I'm going to install it, as they say, two inches from the bottom down here and we're gonna see how that works all right a little update on the temperature sensor um, the instructions indicate that you should go outside you should bring this temperature sensor outside if you're installing the potentiometer which is the uh, you know control unit inside the cabinet but this should go outside and then back in down low I just called my good friends Sergio and Fabio uh, over at the tech support for Wabasto, who makes the isotherm unit, and they said that that is not necessary. It's really just an aesthetic thing that they, um, you know, move it outside and then bring it back in. And so if you don't mind having the wire run within your refrigerator, by all means, save yourself the hassle and just move it to the bottom like we're going to do here. Here's our installation so far. Over here we've got the uh, temperature switch, the, I can't even think of what they call it, but some weird name. Um, and we've got the control wire, the white wire, that goes back to the energy saver uh, unit back on the compressor, uh, the blue unit, as, as if you recall. And then this black wire, again, is our temperature sensor. Temperature sensor goes down. Um, as you can see, I've, well, maybe you can't see, but uh, right back down there, that white thing is the temperature sensor. Probably not the best install uh, that's ever happened, um, but I do have some life caulk on the back of it. I think it's going to stay in there, especially because it's in the back and it's not going to get bothered too much. Um, we also have a shelf that goes down there that uh, will sort of rest up against it. Um, I'm obviously going to take off those zip ties, or, or at least take off the, the tails of the zip ties, um, and we should be ready to go. I'm going to go in the other cabinet and start working on the dip switches, and then we will hook up the unit and see if it works.